My guest today died in a car crash. He went to hell. And then he realized the true God, the Father, and what he was like. So, Randall Rathbun, welcome to our show. Hi, Randy. It's a distinct pleasure, honor to be with you today and with all of you. Yes, it's true. I actually died and was being taken to hell. I, I'll just jump right in and say, that first of all, I was active in my church, very active, and worked on a worship team. But on the other side, I was living a double life, and I hid it from everybody. But you know, you can't hide anything from God. And I had this weight on my conscience all the time, and yet I kept using the grace of God as an excuse and as a cover for my sin. So things kept getting slowly worse for me as I kept indulging in these secret sins. And it came to a head on Friday evening, August 30th, 2002. I, was, I had what is called an acute psychosis by the psychologists today, but it's a temporary nervous breakdown. And it was caused by both the lifestyle that I was living and by me uh, just kind of falling in a trap, I think, that the enemy laid for me. We Christians need to become aware that we're watched closely by the spirits of darkness and they will move in any chance they, they get. And that's what happened to me here. So I left to go down to church seeking help and I didn't find any, I'm sorry to say, on a Friday evening. And I needed to hear the word of God. It's very, very important that we hear the word of God and that we obey it. But I gave up hope and I came back, uh, going back home about 9.30 in the evening. And I was very, very stressed out at this moment. And I heard a voice talking to me saying, take your hands off the steering wheel. Please, please, I beg all of you, do not take your hands off the steering wheel. God will never, ever give you that kind of command. I did, unfortunately, the car went out of control and hit the freeway stanchion on the left side. At that moment, I lost consciousness only to wake up above my car about 20 feet in the air, chained up with three sets of chains. And my wrists were bound very tightly behind my back. My ankles were bound together, and then both were cinched up together. It was very painful. I tried to break the chains. I realized then I was captured. And I didn't know who had me at that moment, but he was screaming at the top of his lungs, he's mine, he's mine, he's mine. I am taking him to the lake of fire. And at that moment, there was a sudden loss of stability. It felt just like you fell into a deep hole. And down we went, a free fall. Your stomach just gets excited or you can't stand that emotion. And down we went and he's screaming, he's mine, he's mine. I'm throwing him into the lake of fire. And I got very frightened. I called out to God and I said, why? Why is this happening to me? And instantly, living scriptures appeared in front of me. Very remarkable. Not only could you read them, but they also spoke to you. One of them was the wages of sin is death. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. Whatever a man sows, that shall he reap. And there was Jesus saying, Verily, verily, I tell you, whoever commits sin is a slave of sin. That word there is slave. Doesn't mean I can just walk away from it. And at that moment, Randy, I realized that I had deceived myself. 
And I had not really deceived God. And I was about to receive the righteous full reward for my secret sins. And at that point, I lost hope. Most horrible thing that can happen to a person is to lose all hope. And a thought hit me. I could not bear the weight of that thought, but the thought was, you are going to be in hell forever and ever and ever. And we don't think about that. We really don't think about the fact that we are going to end up in one of two places forever and ever. But I had neglected to heed God's word. I most certainly had not followed the commands. And I was flagrantly doing my own will, feeding my lust, my selfishness, my own stubbornness. And now I was going to reap a full reward of that way of life. So we entered hell, very hot, very hot place. You don't want to even be near it. And I had trouble starting to hail the fumes, which were sulfurous, but they also choked you up, sort of like breathing acid. You couldn't really take the atmosphere. It was very hot. And we got closer and closer. We sped up a little faster to go to the lake of fire. And I'm chained up. I'm hurting. I'm frightened out of my skull. I, I'm about to realize that the wages of sin is death. And then I hear people screaming. It's not a sound that you want to hear. And there were not two or three. It was literally millions of people screaming. And they're not getting out of hell. They're stuck there, and they want out. And there's terrible pain. You know they're hurting, and they can't get out. And they're screaming because they want out. They can't. I was about to join them, and down we went. And I heard the flames of hell absolutely huge flames they're waiting to swallow the sinner the disobedient ones the ones who are played fast and loose with god's grace like i did and just before we hit that lake of fire all of a sudden i heard six very loud bangs like firecrackers going off, but very loud. And I woke up less than a second later, and I was above the earth. And the first words out of my mouth were, I escaped. I don't know how, but I escaped. I got out of hell. And I was recovering from that trauma and that pain and that incredible fear. And gradually, I was able to relax. Then God the Father spoke to me. Incredible, awesome voice of authority. A place I was in literally shook when he spoke. And he said, my son, we have an important decision to make. And I'm going to give you all the time in the world to make it. And I knew that he would keep his word and give me all the time that I needed to do that. And then he said something which really, really ministered life to me. He said, I trust you. Something that I had not heard from my own earthly dad for 51 years. No matter how hard I worked to get my father's approval, he never gave it. I was especially hurtful 
when your very own father says, I don't trust you. God said that. And it, I broke down and cried right on the spot. I said, why? Why do you trust me? I broke your word. I was almost in hell. I did everything against you. And Father shushed me at that moment. He said, Randall, I know all that. And I placed all of that sin on my own son. At that moment, I also realized, stop arguing with God the Father and listen to what he's saying. So, Absolutely. I did. I <laughs> <And> did. <laughs> you did. And you, so you were... You were face to face with God the Father at this point. Yes. After having been in hell, and you had been an avid churchgoer before this incident. But then, so you're how how are are you convicted at that point of of your sins, or how God obviously responds to you that He trusts you, and you feel that that's unmerited. Did He? Explain that, or did you understand why he would say that to you? Randy, I think that God the Father wanted me. I think he wants all of us to know that the grace that is given to us through the Lord Jesus Christ is unwarranted. I think that he has to take all of the self-righteousness off us. I think he has to take Everything that we feel that we're entitled to by thinking that we serve God or being a religious person or doing good things, it's not that at all. And I believe that he wanted me to know that he is a gracious, merciful God, mercy meaning un deserved kindness nothing you could do would earn it and i think that's one of the reasons why i experienced the horrors of hell to know that righteously we should be in the lake of fire that is what we actually have deserved there is both righteousness and mercy but i think god wanted me to know that that mercy is his heart of grace that decided to move ahead and forgive us. Mm. And your body, Randall, is mangled in the car at this point. And so you are faced with the decision that God gave you to make. What was that uh, decision, and, and what were you called to, to decide uh, your fate? Well, he allowed me to taste seven areas of heaven. And he, I got to see that God knows our talents and our abilities, that he has places in heaven that accommodate what talents and skills that we have. I also discovered that anything that we do starts here on earth, but it continues into eternity. And I got to see also that God truly, truly is love, amazingly so. And I got to, I got to that point of realizing that pure love is always seeking the good of the other person. And so I stopped because I realized that the father had loved me totally. And I asked him, Father, you've been loving me. How can I love you? How can I love you back? What would make you happy? And at that moment, he didn't even speak. He just let me know in my spirit. I want you to go back and I want you to talk about me and what happened. And I want you to share with people 
who I really am. Mm. He gave you a choice, but what's, what's interesting about how you responded to God was that you asked him what he wanted. How did he respond to that? Because that's not something most, most I think, do. They ask for God for whatever they feel like they want or need. But you asked God to tell you. Yes, I did, Randy. Because heaven runs on pure love. And God wants us to have that pure love. It is never forced. It is given voluntarily. And my heart was touched, really touched especially when the father allowed me to sing along with the seraphim. I was greatly touched by that. And I, I guess I caught that I needed to reciprocate. If we are going to be loving people, we need to have an active, fervent love. We can't be on the receiving end all the time. We need to be giving the love of God. Yeah, that's what prompted me to stop and say, Father, how can I love you? That's the most wise question that we can ask our Heavenly Father. How can I love you? Mm. And you were seeing people in heaven that were working as unto the Lord, Colossians 3.23, joyfully. And in a greater way than they had ever uh, worked or played or whatever uh, on earth. So you were seeing this born out in heaven. I would think you would have wanted to stay. Is that, was that going through your mind at all? That, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm making this choice. God is telling me what he wants. Was there any struggle at that point? Because you were returning to a, a mangled body and also to the temptations that the world would present. Well, Randy, the thing that I think all of us should do, and I was a goal setter in my life. I did graduate magna summa cum laude from college, but God wants us to shoot for the best, the highest, and there's nothing higher and it's so simple. It's amazing how we keep forgetting this. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, and your strength, and your might. And then love your neighbor as yourself. And that's what it's all about. That's what heaven is all about. And I decided I've got to aim for love 100%. And I just automatically knew Ask the author of love. Ask love himself. How can I love? How can I love you? And he's going to give you the absolute best answer. You know, one of your uh, the aspects of, of what you shared with me that struck me, Randall, was that you are, in fact, you have a stellar resume. You, you have uh, worked in aerospace as an engineer. You're a mathematician, a genius, and God specifically showed you something related to your uh, acumen in those areas because you've worked on stealth fighter jets and, and all of that. So what did he show you in heaven that related to your talents here on earth? I'm going to kind of answer your question in a little different way. Okay. okay, it's the father that made you and me. And it's the father that names who we are. And it's the father that provides our destiny. And so the father gives us unique abilities and unique talents. He knew my mathematical talent. In fact, he told me, I gave you that talent, Randall. So the neat thing is, is if we build up our relationship with God the Father, he uniquely calls out the best in us. I mean, that's a really cool thing about a dad. A real dad 
challenges you, engages with you, knows exactly what your strengths and knowledge and capabilities are, and he works to bring out the character. I guess I'm really saying God the Father knows how to bring out the best of Jesus Christ that he put inside of you. You are a very unique creation of God. Nobody can replace you. Uh, you're irreplaceable. And God, the Father, knows exactly what he made in you. So that's how I'm going to answer you. Yes, well, that, that's a good answer. And um, the best, certainly, that the talents that you brought uh, in the world, and you, you saw those talents being manifested in others uh, in heaven. Um, let's let's go to that point at which you did uh, return back to this body, and God uh, gave you a, a forewarning as to what you would uh, experience after returning. Yes. I, I want to say that that touched my being as the father spoke to me. Now, what kind of caring dad would God the father be if he just kept his mouth shut and allowed you to stumble into misfortune or stumble into adversity? I was amazed that the father cared so much that he told me exactly what was going to happen to me ahead of time if I decided to return back to earth. Randy, the, the best thing that I can say here is that God honors us. He really does in a really amazing way. And he was honoring our free will. He was honoring my uh, desire here. Again, truly, truly loving me. And he fully informed me. Yeah, I felt, I felt glad that a father would tell me everything ahead of time. I felt really glad about that. And that actually increased my desire to come back from heaven. And I also knew that he would help me. And I spoke that out to him. And I said, Father, if I can hold your hand, we can get through anything. Mm. So, so important to have, uh, have that touch from the Father's hand. So, uh, Randall, uh, you came back, returned, broken bones and injuries from the accident. You hit a tree, um, but you also came back to a body that was susceptible to the, to the same temptations that you had faced prior to the experience in hell and in heaven. Tell us what changed for you or what did not change? Well, first of all, I will say here's what didn't change. God did not instantly remove my desire to sin. That did not change. What began to change is I slowly realized who God really was. Incredible love, but incredible purity and incredible holiness. And it worked on me. God didn't overwhelm me. He's not here to condemn us and say, there you go again, falling into sin. I'll just back away and leave us. No, we actually shove God away by our sinning. And it breaks his heart. And so as I got to get closer to God in the years after that accident, I realized what love really was. Love doesn't force. It asks us, will you love back? Will you love back? I think the greatest statement of love was when Jesus died on the cross. That was a real love there. Hmm. Randall, many of our guests come back with specific messages uh, that the Lord provided for them to speak to 
our audience, to whom we are uh, sharing. So uh, what would be your special message to our audience today from your experience or what you gleaned from that? Isaiah 57 says, prepare, prepare. Get the obstacles out of the way of God's people. He is a God who dwells in holiness. That lack of holiness and purity keeps us from seeing God. God is pure. Those who have a pure heart will see God. I would urge everyone, please, please seek the holiness of God the Father with all of your heart. Be holy, even as the Lord your God is holy. That's what I would say. So beautiful. You know, that um, you had experienced in, in what you call the secret sin, something that many struggle with. Um, you know, the church oftentimes is thought of as a body of uh, saints, but there are many sinners <laughs> within the church and, of course, outside of the church. But you spoke, you've spoken, uh, Randall, of the grace of God. You met the Father, Father God, who uh, said he trusted you when you didn't earn that trust. And you experienced hell, so you knew the wages of sin. And that was something the Lord had revealed to you. So we're going to uh, wrap this up, but um, what, what are you doing today after after uh, after this experience? I'm actually going to spend time worshiping God the Father. Okay. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> that's, a, that's an answer. You're going to spend time worshiping God the Father, shouldn't we all? <laughs> so, uh, you know, this has been just a very inspiring and, uh, message um, that you have shared with us. And thank you for your transparency, Randall. Uh, throughout your sharing, and uh, you know, we we have learned and and uh, from you, and have felt the presence of the Lord. So, uh, we're going to uh, say goodbye to our audience right now, uh, and we're going to encourage anyone that does not know the Lord to confess your sins right now. Again, thank you for sharing with us, Randall. You're welcome. Until thank next time. Be of good cheer because heaven is in your future. Take care and God bless. Thank you for watching this episode of Heaven Encounters. If you'd like more information, you can go to Randy K Ministries at randyk.org. Take care and God bless.